Where did all this start? Uh, this started in my head. <laughs> this this probably started about a year ago. So so I came in here, and I was doing an interview for my new book, and and I mentioned to Chrissy. I said, "Listen, I've got this idea about radio drama. I've got this idea about a story. Give me a month or two. I'll give you a script." Um, and it's been flying ever since. So it was quick. Um, but it's been quick and and exciting, and I'm I'm so so excited for people to hear this. And Lisa, when it comes to, I mean, you know, you're you're no stranger to drama, appearing on the Gaiety stage in everything from drama, comedy, musical, you name it. Difference of putting it into a radio environment. How have you found that? Well, it was I've absolutely loved it. I didn't even have to learn the script. It was right there in front of me. <laughs> good, huh? good point. No didn't lines have to, to learn, learn the lines. No, we like that. But I mean, Alex's writing is absolutely fantastic. My son even loves his books. And it, the way he writes is so creative and beautiful that I couldn't wait when I was asked to be part of it to read the script. And then, of course, when I read it, I was over the moon because it's fantastic. Now, I'm going to play a little clip of it in a mm. moment, but the one thing that I do find with it, and maybe this is because, you know, there's not a huge amount of radio drama done on yeah. the Isle of Man, is just how much it takes you out of the here and now and into a whole different world, Alex. I mean, how, how do you set about actually doing that? Because you've put it together, you've produced it, you've had to do all the sound engineering and stuff. Yeah, it, it needed a, a lot of obsession and, and, a, <laughs> and a lot of time. So I was very particular about the setting that I wanted that I wanted to get from it, but this is this is purposefully as atmospheric as possible. We are we are right in with Hammer Horror and with Ealing Comedy. It's a very particular tone, but it's this is this is Manx through and through. This is this is as Manx as the hills. So this is as if um, a writer had to in in the 1940s or 50s write a 1920s horror, but happened to have been on the island on holiday for a few months. <laughs> It's uh, it's going to be fantastic. I've listened to the whole thing, but let's just have a listen to a little bit of a teaser as to what you can hear this Friday night. Out of the mists and rain she comes If ever your name she cries your dumb About 150 years ago, there was a Ginny lived out near Fleshick on her own, close to the sea. She got herself rather a reputation for her readings. I don't follow. They said that she could see into the sands of time just by looking at your palm or feeling a lock of your hair. Most people let her be, but she was particularly popular amongst the young ladies. They'd come out to her wanting to know who they were going to marry. All seemed harmless enough until some young chit didn't like what she was told and started spreading rumours that Ginny was partaking in more sinister practices. You know what the good book says. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. She was tried in whatever ridiculous way there was, probably a ducking stool or some such nonsense, found guilty and rolled down a hill in a barrel full of nails. And that was that? Hmm, You'd like to think so. But some say Ginny had vengeance on her mind. Some say her vengeance was so consuming she couldn't rest, not even in her grave. Some say they see Ginny every year or so, screaming and jeering or whispering their name. And if you do see her... It's nothing but an ill omen for an accident or a bad crop. It's bad news is what it is. And you think your father saw this? Ginny, this witch. Not everyone sees the world in such plain terms as you, Hall. I'm not scoffing at you, Joyce, but please understand me. I've heard my fair share of stories like this and it always turns out the same. There's more to life than what's right in front of your nose. People round here still know that. People round here still hold to the old ways. She'll snuff you out like a candle wick. Like a candle now, the interesting thing is, I actually heard that clip first before I listened to the whole of the, the, the drama, and uh, it really is only a taster of what people are going to experience. Also, um, a lot of local influence. I mean, Alex, let's start with the fact that uh, I know Ruth Keggins in there, there's, lo- there's local music in there as well. It's not just literally about the spoken word. No, absolutely. Um, this, is, this is a love letter to the island, to its stories, to its landscape, to its people, to its music. So... Everything in there is is local, but I hope 
this appeal is broader than just the island. This isn't just for us. This is a very large, engaging story. And uh, Lisa, I mean, as soon as we played the, the clip, I got the uh, sort of inevitable text of where's the Manx accents and things like that. There's, there is a wealth of different accents in there. And um, not only that, when it comes to acting, there are a number of different accents there, not just Manx ones, that you, you have to get right. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it... it as Alex says, it is a celebration of the island. It's an all local cast as well, which is very exciting. You know, there's a huge amount of talent, as we all know mm. over here. Um, so it was very nice for Alex to ask us to all be involved. But um, I mean, part of the story, my character, for instance, is, you know, she is a local girl um, who was sent away to boarding school. But she loved the island so much that she came back. She mm. couldn't possibly bear to be away from the island. So um, I kind of got that, you know, that's a little <laughs> bit of my, 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 my thoughts in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's acting, you know, accents are part of the character and that's what you do. And Alex, when it mm. comes to the, the story now, I don't want you to give it away nope. and what it's all about, but what's the sort of general gist? Because, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of us have gone through primary school and maybe even secondary school locally and uh, heard about, the, you know, the, the legends and the stories of Ginny the Witch and things like this. Um, but there are there are some dark moments in there as well, aren't there? There are. I think to call this horror might put people off. This is very much a chiller. Mm. So this is all about atmosphere. But there is a strong supernatural malevolent presence in there um but that doesn't mean that there's time for laughs and time for adventure um because that's that's certainly the the main crux of it i think I, it's incredibly exciting i mean lisa if people watch the video of this and can see alex's face then when he's talking about <laughs> my, and the, that was impressive he's excited <laughs> now he's excited but, now. you know and it's true i i am i'm so genuinely pumped from this i've been very lucky in the arts i've i've worked as an actor all over the world and i've written books that lots of people have read but i'm particularly excited about this piece it feels quite close to my heart and i think Radio drama is such an exciting medium. And don't get me wrong, I know that this is a big ask. This is going out at the same time as Have I Got News For You? <laughs> so we, we, we are battling with this. But you know, we are genuinely saying if people take that chance, sit down with a glass of their favourite tipple or a mug of their favourite brew they're going to be taken away and have a really, really special time. You can't have a, a better, to, to be honest, selling line than that. Um, <laughs> this Friday night, it's nine o'clock on Manx Radio on both AM and FM. It's called Whistle for Ginny. It's a new original radio drama. Uh, do make sure you tune in to listen to it. And if you cannot, it will be available as a podcast afterwards. Yeah. So if you're into one of this podcasting, multi platformy stuff, don't worry, it will be available. Um, at least I have to ask her, what tipple will you be sitting and uh, listening to it with? Oh, well, I should think of pro probably a lovely glass of red wine. Oh, God. Good. That's a, a, yours. I think knowing my character, Hall would definitely have a very strong cup of tea. <laughs> Excellent stuff. <laughs>